So first benchmark, we've got the trap bar deadlift. Pretty common lift um, for most footballers. Obviously, the straight bar deadlift has been around for a long time. It puts a lot more strain on the back. And the trap bar deadlift allows more flexibility for the athlete for, from a mobility point of view, but also levers. So it's uh, friendly for our taller athletes compared to the straight bar uh, deadlift. So essentially, if you're 80 kilos or under, um, you need to be stronger in relative to your body weight because on the Australian rule, obviously AFL is not uh, a weight, there is no weight class like combat sports. You have to go up against all sizes. So the lighter you are, the more important um, the, your strength is uh, from a contest point of view and power point of view. So if you're 80 kilos or under, um, then we want to work towards a 2.5 times body weight deadlift. So for box squat numbers, typically your box squat, you're going to lift uh, less, um, but it's going to be at a faster speed um, for than it compared to the trap bar. So for our 100 kilo athletes looking at two times body weight uh, for one rep, for those for, from 99 kilos to uh, 81 kilos, that range is 2.2. And then for under eight, 80 kilos and under, we're looking at around that 2.5 times body weight from our more explosive measures these two you, you need access to force plates um, if you don't have those and it makes it a little bit trickier to assess but you can jump as high as you can and do the old school um, chalk on the wall and, and measure from your arm length when you reach measure your height and then the distance that you get to with it with a counter movement jump um, but a more reliable approach if you have access to force plates is, is using a counter jump on the plates. So for hundred kilo athletes like on a, um, would like to see 38 centimeters and above 90 kilos, 42 centimeters. And if you're under 80, 45 centimeters. So same sort of mindset because you're competing. At the, so if you're lighter, um, we want to be able to have more explosive uh, traits, drop jump, we're looking at your reactive strength index, your RSI, which takes into account how high you jump and the time that you spend on the on the ground, your contact time. So we're coming off a box for double leg, 40 centimetres, for single leg, 30 centimetres. Uh, we're landing on the box and then you're jumping up as high as you can. All right, so it's measuring your stiffness, how well your body is able to contract high force in minimal time. 100 kilo athletes looking at an RSI score of 2.8. 90 kilo athletes, three and above. And then the 80 kilo athletes, 3.2. Biggest area is working on both your wrestling and tackle technique and how to evade a tackle. So being able to roll and use your shoulders and your hips and that rotational power uh, and timing with it all, the coordination of it all. So practicing these traits in training is critical. Um, and really having a clear idea of what are those areas that you want to work on and, and practicing those in in a specific context like match play at training or small sided games, handball games are a perfect example to to practice your ability to, to uh, fend off and get out of a tackle or um, use your leg speed to break away. So you can develop all this strength and all this power in the gym, but if you don't apply it and practice applying it in different situations, and it's not you're not going to see that transference come on to game day. So that's really, really important.